Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this week is Christmas and obviously I had to do something super festive for this week. So I went online and I found a couple patterns and instructions on how to sew a paw print stocking. But I am putting my own a twist on it since you guys know and love me as the chinchilla lady. I am going to be making this into a chinchilla stocking with a chinchilla paw print. I'm not sure if it looks exactly like that. Let me know in the comments once you see the results. But let's get into it. I'm going to show you step by step how to make your own chinchilla paw print stocking. Now I'm not an expert on the sewing thing, so don't come for me if I'm doing something very wrong. This is a just a for fun thing for my animals. But I found two free patterns online that I ended up combining. So I have this foot one that I used the instructions and the material suggestions and all of that but it wasn't the shape that I wanted. So I found a paw print stocking shape and I just used the cutouts of that to use as my pattern and to make those pieces. But I used the pattern of this one and the instructions and materials from this one. So if you guys are following along, I will have these all linked in the description below. So let's get into it. Now you want to make sure that you are printing out the pattern. I am obviously printing out the paw print one because I'll be using the cutouts for the pattern on this. And the pattern is print per eight and a half by 11 sheet. So you're going to have to cut out each piece and then tape it together before you start cutting out your pieces and your fabric. Why are you going in there? Yeah, I don't know why you're going in there either. Step two. Oh, is that how it is? <laughs> no, it's two barks for step two. <laughs> for step two, two barks, step two. Next, you're going to want to find the fabric for the outside of your stocking. You will then orient the pattern to the direction you want it to show up on your stocking, and you're going to fold this in half so the right sides are together. Next, you're going to grab your taped together pattern, and you're going to place it on your folded fabric. Make sure you place it in the way that you want the pattern to be facing once it's done. Next, you will take a piece of chalk or an invisible pen and you're going to trace the outside edge of the pattern. You can also just pin the pattern to the fabric as well. This is going to mark where you're going to cut. After you make your line, make sure to pin the two pieces of fabric together so that they do not come apart while you're cutting. Next, you're going to make the cut. And if you did trace your pattern, you wanna make sure you are cutting on the inside of that line. Next, you're going to fold your batting in half and you're going to place the fabric you just cut out for the outside on top of that and pin it together. This will make sure that the cuts of both of these fabric match. Once you have your fabric pinned to your batting, you can make the cut. Next, you're going to find your fabric for your lining. Again, you're going to fold this fabric in half and make sure the right sides are together. You will then place your cut out fabric on top of your inside fabric and pin it together and cut this out. Again, this is going to make sure that all of your cuts match. If you do decide to trace the fabric with a piece of chalk, Make sure, again, you are cutting on the inside of the fabric, so again, you have all of those pieces of fabric matching. Do you like these pieces of paper? Next, we'll be cutting out the pieces for the paw. We want two pieces with right sides in because I will be sewing these together to hide that rough edge on the inside of the paw. However, this pattern is not made for that, so I need to alter it a little bit, which means I need to add a seam allowance to each one of these pieces. So once you have your folded piece of fabric with right sides in, you're going to place your pattern pieces on your fabric and you want to add that seam allowance, which is a half inch around each one of your pieces. Next, you will need the fabric to your cuff of your stocking and a measuring tape. You want to measure out about 17 inches long and nine inches tall.
you trying to get cut? <laughs> Next, you will find your batting and you will measure 17 inches long and four and a half inches tall. And then cut this out as well. Next, you will place it on the cuff fabric that you just cut out. Make sure to align it on one edge of this fabric and pin it together. This is going to serve as a structure for your cuff. Now we will be sewing the paw print pieces together. So make sure you are sewing on that half inch seam allowance with leaving one space open so that you can easily turn the piece inside out. Now before you turn this piece inside out, you're going to want to cut off the excess fabric around the seam so that there is less bulk when you flip the piece inside out. Once completed, you can turn the piece inside out. Next, you're going to hand sew the remaining opening of each one of the paw print pieces. Repeat this process for the rest of your paw print pieces. Next, you'll take one of the outer pieces of your stocking and you will place each paw print piece on the stocking where you would like it located. Keep in mind, there is going to be a half inch seam allowance, so you wanna make sure this is not going to interfere where you put your paw print pieces. So what I did is I took a ruler and made sure I knew exactly where that edge was going to end up. Once you picked out a location on your stocking, make sure to pin each one of these pieces and then we will sew them together. When you are sewing the paw print pieces onto the front of your stocking, you do not want to have a very big seam allowance. You want to sew pretty close to the edge without being exactly on the edge. Once you have the paw print sewn onto one of the outer pieces, take the other outer piece and place that on top with right sides on the inside. Next, you will take your two pieces of batting and you will sandwich them around these two outside pieces. This will make sure that once these are sewn together, you can turn the piece inside out and it will show the right sides of the fabric. Next, you will sew this together with a half inch seam allowance. Next, you will take your liner pieces and you will sew this together with a half inch seam allowance. Lastly, we need to sew the cuff together. So you're going to fold this in half with right sides together and you are going to sew this with a half inch seam allowance. Next, you will need to cut off the excess fabric to reduce bulk. So make sure you are cutting around the seams but not cutting the seams off. And you typically just wanna do this around the foot or toe area. You do not need to do it on the top portion of the stocking. Once you have this cut out, you're going to press all the seams out, so this also reduces bulk. Then you will flip your stocking inside out so that it reveals your outer fabric. However, for your lining, you do not want to flip this inside out because you are going to be placing it inside of your stocking. Next, you're going to place your liner into your outer fabric and make sure you are lining up the seams and pushing the toes into the toe area, you know, all that smooth it out. Then you will take your cuff and you will fold this in half so that it covers up your batting. 
Next, you will need to cut a piece of seven inch piece of ribbon so that you have something to hang your stocking by. You will place the cuff inside the liner with the rough edges matching the rough edges of the outside of the stocking. And to line up the seam of the cuff with the backside seam of the stocking. Next, you will take your ribbon and you will place it in between your cuff and your liner fabric. And again, the rough edges are going to match the rough edges of the stocking. So the loop of the ribbon will be placed downwards into the stocking. You also want to line this up with the back side of your stocking. Next, you will sew all these pieces of fabric together. Make sure that you are sewing on the inside of the loop and not sewing your stocking shut. On top of that, they suggest a half inch seam allowance, but I would recommend you do that a lot bigger so that you aren't missing any of the fabric because it is a lot to manage. Once this is sewn together, you are going to pull your cuff out and fold it over your stocking and it is beautiful and complete and you can hang it by your fireplace and enjoy. Now for me, Christmas is all about spending time with your loved ones. My love language is quality time, so I really enjoy doing crafts with the people that I love. And I hope you guys take this tutorial as well and go and make little paw print stockings for your little creatures with all of your family and friends. And I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday, whatever you celebrate. And I hope you guys subscribe and hit that notification bell because I will be back next week with more chinchilla content. And again, I will see you guys in the next one.